Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my newest booking video. It's been quite a while since my first booking video, but it seems to have been very, very successful and I wanted to do another one. So what I've done is I've created a scenario that, to be honest, I don't think WWE are going to book themselves. So we can live in dreamland for a little bit and see what would happen if Gold Dust were to have one more IC title reign before he retires. I mentioned it in a couple of my videos recently that I think he deserves one, but unfortunately I don't think they're going to give him one. So what I have done is I've booked that scenario myself. Now the first thing we need to do, obviously since the Golden Truth split, Gold Dust has sort of become a heel, but the crowd really aren't buying into it because no one really cares about our truth anyway. So the first thing we need to do is turn Gold Dust face again because it's going to work best if he's a face. He's a legend in the business anyway and people sort of tend to go out on top with the crowd behind them cheering them on. So that's going to be our first challenge. And we're going to start everything at SummerSlam. The Miz will be defending his IC title against Dean Ambrose for the four millionth time and will be retaining the title. And in addition to that, the Miz Taraj beat on Booker T whilst he is on commentary, basically because he is sort of backing Dean Ambrose in this situation and calling out the Miz's shortcomings, and the Miz Taraj take exception to this and beat down Booker T, and he has to be taken away and he's not seen for the rest of the night. Then on the next night on Raw, the 21st of August... David Otunga makes his return and replaces Booker T on commentary. Booker T was so badly injured after the beatdown that he can't return. We know David Otunga's coming back anyway, so that kind of ties in with that. Also, Goldust calls out the Miztourage to answer for their attack on Booker T. Obviously, him and Booker T have got quite a lot of history, and he takes exception to their beatdown at SummerSlam, and they do the same to him. Three on one, completely decimate him. Then the following week on Raw on the 28th of August, someone, it doesn't really matter who, is named number one contender for the IC title and they continue a bit of a mini feud with The Miz and The Miz Taraj. That carries on until the 18th of September, the go-home show before No Mercy. And on this show, Booker T and Goldust make their return after their attack from the Miz Taraj and they beat on all of them as payback for their injuries. And Kurt Angle comes out and he announces a tag match for No Mercy between Booker T and Goldust against Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. So at No Mercy we have that tag match. Booker T and Goldust win and The Miz also defends successfully his IC title against whoever it was that was named number one contender. It doesn't really matter. It's quite a short program between those anyway as long as The Miz retains the title. The following night on Raw, so we're the 25th of September now, Goldust interrupts Miz TV and demands a shot at the IC title. He says it's something that was once very dear to him and he hasn't held it for many, many years. And he's basically doing kind of not a retirement speech as such, but kind of a this is my last shot, my final shot at some gold, that kind of promo. The Miz actually agrees to this on one condition, and that is that Goldust can beat both Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas in a handicap match. And that happens straight away. They go straight into that handicap match. Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas have to tag in just to make things a little bit more even. But they are still pretty much dominating Goldust throughout most of the match. Obviously, they're able to keep tagging in the fresh man whenever Goldust gets the upper hand. And he's just getting more and more and more worn out. The Miz is obviously watching on loving this because it looks like Goldust isn't going to get his shot. Then Booker T makes an appearance and he evens things up. Goldust is able to overcome Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas and pick up the win. The Miz is then enraged at both of them and shouts at them as they're leaving ringside. He's just berating them as they're walking up the ramp. And Booker T is celebrating with Goldust raising his hand up in the air. Then on the following couple of weeks leading up to TLC, we have The Miz basically refusing to wrestle his matches 
to try and keep himself fresh for the pay-per-view title defence. And he makes Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas wrestle for him, both to keep himself fresh and as a punishment for both of those for failing him in the handicap match against Goldust. Goldust has a couple of other matches as well that he wins in those weeks and The Miz keeps coming out and sort of just watching from ringside, just scouting Goldust and seeing what's what. He doesn't even bother accompanying Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel to the ring for their matches. They're just not important for him at the moment. He just leaves them to it and focuses his attention on Goldust. Then at the TLC pay-per-view, we have a tables match between Goldust and The Miz. Now, I realise this is obviously the first time in the feud that they've actually gone one-on-one, and it's a bit odd to have a gimmick match towards the beginning of it, but obviously that is the pay-per-view that we're going to have, so there's going to be a tables match, there's going to be a ladder match, there's going to be a TLC match, so that's what WWE have booked into their calendar this year, so I can't get around that. And it seems a waste to not have the IC title defended in some kind of a gimmick match, just to have it in a singles match, when you would just have another straight-off singles match, not for anything but pride, really in a tables match seems a little strange to be honest so we're gonna have a tables match between Goldust and The Miz Goldust a couple of times looks like he's about to put The Miz through a table but The Miz Taraj keep moving the tables out the way so although The Miz gets slammed down onto the mat or to the outside The Miz Taraj move the table out the way so he doesn't go through the table and is still in the match at one point Maurice accidentally takes a bump through a table, gets sort of knocked off the apron, something like that, similar to what happened to Stephanie at WrestleMania. And the Miz Taraj actually take her out the back because she's hurt. This allows Goldust to really get back into the match because it's just a one-on-one affair between him and the Miz. It looks like he is about to win the match, but the Miz manages to hit a skull-crushing finale on Goldust through a table either again off the apron or off the middle turnbuckle, something like that. So he successfully defends his title with no help from anyone. The next night on Raw, so we're at the 23rd of October now, The Miz and The Miz Taraj come out and they celebrate his IC title defence, but there is no Maurice, there is no mention of her condition, it's almost like The Miz doesn't really care that she was collateral damage in the match. All he cares about and all the Miz Taraj care about is the fact that he successfully defended his title against Goldust. Goldust then comes out again and demands a rematch, but is completely shot down by the Miz. Goldust, enraged by this, storms the ring and manages to beat on Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas, but during that, the Miz manages to escape unscathed with his title. The following week, so we're the 30th, of October the Miz is in a match again it doesn't really matter who he is facing and it's looking like he's probably going to get the upper hand here and probably going to get the win and Goldust comes out and costs the Miz the match and reminds the Miz that he feels he is still in the picture for an IC title match again after being humiliated with the loss the Miz hides behind the Miz Taraj to escape unharmed they kind of shield him away from Goldust who celebrates with whoever it was that The Miz was facing. The following week, so we're into November now, it's the 6th of November, there is a battle royal to determine the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. And the last three left in this match are Goldust, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. So it looks like they're easily going to be able to eliminate Goldust, but there's a bit of a miscommunication and Goldust is able to eliminate both Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas at the same time. He wins the match and becomes the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. And obviously The Miz, furious with them, berates them both for losing the match, making themselves look like a fool. The following week, so we're the 13th of November, Goldust's music hits... But we we only see everything from a very, very wide, distant angle. And 
somebody is walking down the ramp dressed up as gold dust got the wig on got all the makeup on and everything and the the robe as well that he used to wear and they make their way into the ring and they lift the wig up to reveal that it's actually maurice decked out as gold dust with all the face paint in kind of one of his body suits she takes off the robe so you can clearly see it's a female figure and not him she then beckons towards the rampway and gold dust walks down and joins her in the ring she then thanks him for all of his help in her recovery since tlc the miz comes out he storms down to the ring and gets up in gold dust's face and maurice just slaps him and she's shouting at him he hasn't bothered checking up on her well-being all he cares about is his intercontinental title And as far as she is concerned, their marriage is over and she is going to be filing for a divorce. And Goldust and Maurice just leave him there humiliated in the middle of the ring as they make their way out. Then at Survivor Series, we have the Intercontinental title match, Goldust versus The Miz. And Maurice comes out. This time she is sort of decked out almost exactly like Marlena was in the late 90s as Goldust's manager, even down to having the cigar in her hand. And although she doesn't get involved directly in the match, she manages to keep the Miz Taraj away so that they can't lend the Miz help. And Goldust manages to win cleanly the Intercontinental title. Finally wins it at Survivor Series. Then the following night, the Miz invokes his rematch clause to try and get the belt back straight away. And again, Maurice manages to stop the Miz Taraj from helping and Gold Dust wins cleanly again. So as far as he's concerned, he's beaten the Miz. He's given him his rematch and beaten him again. That's them done. Now, this all happens on the 20th of November. So between now and the Royal Rumble, which is at the end of January, we basically keep them as far apart as we can. They go into sort of mini feuds with other people. The Miz trying to build himself back up again with the Miz Taraj, but without Maurice, obviously. And Gold Dust just goes into a mini program with someone and successfully holds on to the Intercontinental title. They both take their feuds into whatever the Raw pay-per-view is for December and successfully win their individual feuds there then we come to the Royal Rumble match itself the Miz is in there from very early on sort of number three number four gold dust comes out part way through say number nine or something and a couple after that Booker T comes out and along with gold dust they manage to dominate their portion of the rumble together and they clean house and basically eliminate everyone that was in the ring apart from the miz then the next person that comes out is bo dallas and they manage to even the odds and stay sort of almost two on two and then the next person out is Curtis Axel. So you've got Booker T and Gold Dust in the ring with The Miz, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And they're able to create sort of a two-on-one situation between Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel against Booker T. And that causes Booker T's elimination. Now the Rumble carries on a little bit more. And the Miz Taraj are both then eliminated, but they stay at ringside, almost acting like cheerleaders for the Miz. The Miz manages to eliminate Gold Dust with the help of the Miz Taraj. And there is what seems like an accidental distraction from Maurice, because she's been at ringside the whole time as well, supporting Gold Dust. So it looks like there's a bit of a miscommunication between Gold Dust and Maurice. And the Miz Taraj capitalise on that as well. And the Miz as well manages to then eliminate Gold Dust. The Miz obviously doesn't then win the Rumble. He ends up getting eliminated by somebody else further down the line. Then the following night on Raw, so we are on the 29th of January, Maurice asks for forgiveness from Gold Dust over what happened at the Rumble. She claims it was an accident and he forgives her and places the blame solely on Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Also, The Miz wants one last shot at the Intercontinental title. If he's not going to get a shot now because he didn't win the Rumble, he's not going to get a shot at the Universal title. He wants the Intercontinental title again. 
Goldust accepts this challenge on the condition that the Miztourage are banned from ringside. So it will just be a straight up Goldust versus the Miz. No funny business. And basically it is decided between the two parties and the general manager that if Goldust can beat Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel in singles matches, then they will be banned from ringside. So right there and then on the 29th of January, Goldust easily beats Curtis Axel. Maurice in his corner. They're a well-oiled unit again. The following week, so we are the 5th of February Gold Dust goes up against Bo Dallas and there's a bit of a miscommunication by Maurice again and it nearly costs Gold Dust the match but he manages to fight his way back in and win so both Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel are banned from ringside at the next pay-per-view but again Gold Dust is starting to question Maurice and the crowd are as well quite where her loyalties lie she again pleads for forgiveness and Gold Dust forgives her and they leave sort of arm in arm then we come to the pay-per-view and gold dust defends his title against the miz obviously the miz tourage are both banned from ringside and it looks like gold dust is easily going to win and then right at the last moment maurice turns on gold dust costs him the match and the title she has sided with the miz again and they look stronger than ever then on the following night on Raw, so we're at the 12th of February. Maurice and The Miz come down to the ring together. Maurice tries humiliating Gold Dust. He then storms out and becomes very, very angry and very nearly lashes out at her, but he manages to control himself and beats on The Miz instead, with Maurice trying to drag him off. And finally, she does manage to get between the two of them and leads The Miz to safety. And this sort of goes on the next few weeks up until the pay-per-view match in March where the Miz will defend his IC title again against Gold Dust but the numbers game is just too much for him this time unfortunately he's got the Miz Taraj in his corner he's got Maurice back it's basically four on one against Gold Dust and he just can't quite do it every time he comes close and it looks like the Miz is out they distract the referee or they distract Gold Dust And he's not really able to get into a rhythm. The Miz then catches him from behind. Skull crushing finale. One, two, three. Wins. And then from there, they basically go their separate ways and have their own matches at WrestleMania. Goldust likely goes into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And the Miz probably defends his title in some kind of multi-man match. Or possibly against uh, an NXT call-up as a surprise opponent. So... Unfortunately, although it doesn't have a particularly happy ending for Goldust in the end, he is still able to get that one last title run. We shift the dynamic between The Miz and Maurice slightly, and we're also able to sort of show echoes and shades of Goldust from the late 90s when he was really in his heyday. And that is how I would book one last intercontinental title reign for Goldust. What do you make of my booking? Would you have done things wildly different or maybe tweaked a few things? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, if there are any other scenarios you would like me to book, please let me know in either the comments on this video or I do have a poll on my Facebook page as well where you can leave ideas on there. I'd love to hear what you think I should book next. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and also follow me on Twitter at RightlyWrongly. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.